Hi everyone, I'm here for a chat today. A chat, and I have my laptop in front of me because normally at the beginning of each year I sit down and I look at my resolutions that I set for myself at the beginning of the previous year and then I talk about whether or not I achieved those goals, completed those resolutions. <laughs> Obviously, last year was last year and I'm sure that I didn't complete these, but I still want to look back on them in a very brief way and I'm not going to break myself obviously for not completing things because you know why would why would we do that but I thought it might be interesting to look back on them because I seem to remember that at the beginning of last year I, I had said I didn't want to set really strict goals so maybe they were very lenient anyway I haven't looked at this video since uploading it last January so we can look at it together and then what I want to do is tell you some of my favourite things from last year. TV shows, films, things that I enjoyed that maybe you might want to check out this year. They might brighten up your day, your week, your month um, and just have a general catch up and that is what this video is. Please do grab a cup of tea, sit down, get cosy. Yes, let's do it. So I have a list here of 12 things that I would like 12. to get to in 2020. I have more than 12 things I want to do, obviously, but these are some of the main things to kind of frame everything else around. Number one is to exercise more. And I'm leaving this general deliberately. Um, okay, exercise more, interesting. I mean, I have never seen the, the block that I live on more and I've never done more circles in my life. Um, I did buy a, um, it's not a Fitbit, it's a cheap version of a Fitbit just to measure step count and I do know that walking around my flat in a circle is 40 steps and I do know that it takes a lot of circles to reach that 10,000 step goal and I haven't always uh, reached that by going round and round in circles. Um, there was a point where I was doing, her channel I think is called Mad Fit, I can't remember but it was a 10 minute workout and Mr M and I were doing that every day maybe last April, May, and then we stopped. But you know, I'm gonna give myself a tick for that because we deserve ticks. Goals two and three are linked to each other. So goal number two is to read one short story a day and goal number three is to read one poetry collection a week. No, I, I, but I did not do that. I, I, that was the one goal I remembered I had set for myself because I thought it seemed manageable. And to be fair, when you just say it, it does seem manageable, but I, I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I had hoped that if I read one short story a day and I read one poetry collection a week, I could make a huge dent in those TBRs and I didn't do that. Um, again, I'm not gonna worry about that. These goals also tie into my next goals, which is number four, write one poem a week, and number five, submit to journals and competitions. I did not, is that one poem a week? Yeah, I didn't do that. It's interesting, when you start off writing, if you want writing to be part of your career and you write short stories and poetry, you send that out to literary journals and to competitions and you build up a writing CV. And I did all that years ago and now I've written 10 books. I have publishers, I have an agent. And so I'm not doing that for the same reasons anymore. And, and I stopped sending things out into the world because I was focusing on big projects, books, which is fine, that's absolutely fine. But now I want to go back, I think, go back a step and not to build up a writing CV, though it's fun to send to journals and competitions, but because it's a way to build up a load more material again. Um, because if you submit to journals, they often have closing deadlines. Competitions obviously also have closing deadlines. So it's a way to keep yourself in check to make sure that you're creating new things. And it's advice that I give to new writers all the time to keep an eye on competitions and journals and, and, and write things for them that perhaps wouldn't have existed if you hadn't thought I should submit to that by the end of the month. So it was a good goal to have, but I did other writing last year. I wrote a, a book, so I'm not gonna hate on myself for not doing this goal, because I wrote a book and that's okay. And I started another book as well, so that's fine. But I do want to continue this goal into 2021. Goal number six is to record more episodes of my podcast, Books with Jen. I did not do this because I did not. I haven't seen anybody to do that with, apart from I did 
get the chance to record a video with Michelle Faber in my mother-in-law's garden in September. I can count the number of people that I've seen on my hands and I have fewer fingers than most people. So yes, I recorded a pod, not a podcast, a video with Michelle and that was really lovely, but I didn't do books with Jen. I didn't bring that back because I'm used to recording interviews in person with people and obviously I haven't been able to do that. If this continues for a very long time, then I will think about um, recording interviews virtually and doing that instead. Um, but it didn't seem like a, with everything else that was going on, it wasn't an acute thing that needed to be brought back in that moment. So I have let it rest for a little bit longer. If you don't know, I have a podcast called Books with Jen and you can catch up with previous episodes, which I'll link in the description box down below. And yes, I would like to bring that back at some point in the future. Goal number seven is that I want to start doing a new hobby or just to discover something new to do in my spare time. That sounds really vague, I know, it's intentionally vague, and I would also like your help with trying to work out what that thing should be. Goal number eight is to redo my website. I'm very happy with my website, it does its job, but it could definitely be. Yeah, I didn't redo my website. I had completely forgotten that that was a goal. That's fine. As I said in that video, it'll do for now. There are bigger things going on. Um, as for a new craft activity, I think I'd said maybe in not this video, but in a different one, that I wanted a craft-based activity and I enjoyed cooking, but I didn't want that to be my new hobby because I already kind of had that as a hobby. I wanted something else. But do you know what? I'm going back on that and saying that it is now my hobby because I do feel like baking and cooking took on a life of its own in 2020 for me as I turned into a lockdown cliche and started baking all the time. So... Even though I had envision envisioned envisioned something else entirely, I, I am very happy with that activity that I did. So I did a lot of baking in 2020, which I'm sure you have seen. I've included it in reading vlogs. I will link those in the description box down below. I've also showed them on Instagram. And I think why I'm classing this as a, a craft-based activity, and I would do even if I hadn't done this other part, is that I have been inventing recipes too. So as I've grown more confident with baking, um, I have thought of ways to create and not necessarily new things, but trying to work out how to create things without using recipes based on knowledge that I've acquired practicing other things. And that has been really, really fun. I have also done a few other things such as making Christmas wrapping paper using potatoes and ink um, as a throwback to my childhood. And that was definitely craft based, not a full time hobby, but I enjoyed doing a little bit of that. I've also enjoyed playing around with um, reels and video making on Instagram and um, I also did an audiobook too in 2020, a very rough, fun audiobook of Pride and Prejudice and that's a creative thing and I enjoyed doing that and, um, and spending time with, with you guys doing that. I did that at 3pm every day for, was it three months? I can't remember, it was a long time reciting, not by heart, in front of me, Pride and Prejudice, doing all the voices and just, yeah, that was creative, it was fun. Goal number nine is to continue and maintain freelance life. I know that that also sounds quite vague, but touch wood, over the past few years, I feel like I've really struck the right balance between doing long projects with clients, doing shorter projects with clients, and then completing my own work as well, such as books. I did that and again like with anything last year it looks slightly different to how I envisaged it. I had to change a big chunk of my job so part of my job is going into schools, universities, book festivals, bookshops to either talk about my books or teach writing workshops um, or to give lectures on various different things and I couldn't do that last year for obvious reasons so I change the percentage of the type of work that I do. So I took on more freelance editing work, I took on more freelance writing work, and I also ran a lot of online writing workshops, which I'll also be doing this year. I'll link that in the description box down below if you're interested, and um, took on more individual writing workshops as well. So that became a much bigger percentage of the job that I do, and I'm very, very lucky to be in a position where I could change aspects of my job without changing my job completely and I feel very lucky to have been able to do that. Goal number 10 is to continue with therapy. Um, again, 
quite a basic one, but therapy made up such a, a, it was a big part of adjusting how I think about the way I approach things in 2019. Yes, I, I did do this. I was able to continue um, psychotherapy over the phone in 2020. Um, this is a whole it's a whole conversation for another time or a conversation for another place. I'm not really sure. 2020 for um, healthcare um, has been extremely complicated and it's something that I don't see talked about as much outside of disability circles. And I have spoken about this actually on um, Instagram and I'll insert that thread here so that you can see it and I will link it down below. I also put it on Twitter as well, which is probably easier to find. So I will link that in the description box down below. All of my healthcare has been different um, and as someone with a disability that has been really hard um, and it's it's a whole thing. It's a, it's, it's a whole thing um, and you can go and read that thread if you would like to, but therapy was something that I was able to continue on the phone. Obviously I go for my hands. I haven't seen my hand surgeon. I haven't seen my eye doctor. You can't do those things over the phone and um, our IVF got cancelled last year too. So last year, whoa, it was crap, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Okay, right. Let's move on. Goal number 11 is a really specific one, and that is to go to more National Trust places. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jen. My 12th goal is to do more in the local community. There is a website called Hands On For London, which lists local volunteer positions, so I would like to utilise that. Okay, again, this looks different, so I have been donating to local charities and food banks, and I have been baking for my local community. As someone who's been shielding, it is safe for me to do that, and um, I can give baked goods to my neighbours, and then they can drop the Tupperware back off outside my door, which I then quarantine and wash, and the whole cycle starts all over again. So I've been doing what I can in the current situation and supporting other things from afar. So those are most of my goals for 2020 it's going to be a big year for us as you know we're moving which is um scary and exciting and we're also doing a few other big things which definitely fall under the heading of adulting well we did move but as i said our ivf was cancelled so that other big thing didn't happen um and my final goal was to continue captioning all of my YouTube videos, which I also wanted to touch on because I think it's really interesting and also important and I could uh, do with your help in trying to contact YouTube about a certain issue as well, please. So it used to be when you uploaded a video to YouTube, YouTube would automatically caption everything. They didn't guess what you were saying very well, but you could then go into that file and edit it so that it was correct. And captioning is really important to me, accessibility for those who are deaf or hard of hearing or those who are watching the video and don't have English as their first language and perhaps want either English subtitles or subtitles in their own language and that only works if the original subtitles are there and are correct. However, last year, for some bizarre reason, YouTube stopped doing automated captions, not on every single video, so I don't know what the reason is when those don't appear. Sometimes they don't appear at all and sometimes they appear five days late and that's not good enough. Obviously, I want captions to be available when the video goes up. So I've had to think of different solutions to this and it's not just my channel, it's happening to everybody. Um, some creators may not be aware of this, so if you're not, please do check this because as I said, it's, it's really, really important. So what I have to do for videos where captions don't appear automatically, which for recent uploads has been every single one of them, and as I said, this is happening to other people as well, I've had to transcribe what I'm saying. So put myself on half speed and then type. I used to do this a lot, it used to be part of my job. One of my earliest jobs was working as a medical secretary and I would type up doctor patient notes listening to what doctors were saying, type it up. I used to type really fast. I used to be able to type over a hundred words a minute. I think ectodactyly makes you aerodynamic, but my hands are falling apart now and I can't do that. And Mr. M was getting very cross with me because I was causing myself a lot of pain. He was like, let me just get this straight. 
you are making your videos as accessible as possible for the deaf and disabled community by disabling yourself even more. And when he said it like that, I realized I should probably try and do something else. So this is the solution that I now have, probably a very convoluted solution for other people, not so for me. What I do when I have filmed a video is then I open an email on my phone and I click the voice activation and I hold it up and I play the video and the phone guesses what I'm saying and it transcribes everything that I'm saying really messily. It gets most words wrong. It's not as accurate as the YouTube automated captions, but I know what I've said so I can understand it when I read it. So I email that to myself and then I open up a new email, open up the transcript and then I say the transcript again but slower, correcting any mistakes and also adding in punctuation. And it makes me feel like I'm dictating telegrams or something. So I will say, last month, comma, I read this book, comma, and I quite enjoy that. It's quite therapeutic. So that means that I get a very accurate audio transcript apart from maybe a few author names are incorrect. And then I can change that by hand and upload that to my video. I could just edit the first audio transcript by hand, but me repeating it again saves me having to type, saves me pain, and it works best for me. So that's the solution that I have, but it would be great if YouTube could make sure that all captions are there, especially for channels whose creators aren't going to make their own captions later because then nothing is available. So if you could drop YouTube a tweet, drop them an email, ask them why they are no longer making sure that videos have automated captions, I would really appreciate that. Please, please, please. Um, yes. Anyway, let us talk about other things. I said I was gonna to talk to you about some favorite things from last year. I made a list of things that I can't hold up and show you. A few favorite things from last year was the involvement that I had in speaking out against the new version of The Witches film, and I will link my article in the description box down below, and a panel that I did with Face Equality, um, and that was really refreshing because it was the first panel about disfigurement and disability that I had done where all of the panelists were people who had disabilities and disfigurements, and I just thought it was just, it was a great experience and I loved it. It's something that I speak about a lot, but to have that community feeling was, was, was slightly different and very, very welcome. I really enjoyed doing my work for Toast last year. So I run their online book club. They're a clothing company. They also have an online magazine. I run their book club. I write articles about books for them every month. And I've done that for I think three, at least three years now, but they wanted to do more events online. So I interviewed Maggie O'Farrell and Bernadine Evaristo and Evie Wilde and Tracy Chevalier. And I really enjoyed doing that. I will link those in the description box down below. Um, and also I have enjoyed, as I said, creating more online content in 2020, different kind of things to try and keep us all company. I also made, as I mentioned before, um, audiobooks. So Pride and Prejudice, Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. I did a live cook along, which was a lot of fun. I've done some quizzes online with Lauren and Jean. You know, everyone was doing quizzes back at the beginning and I'm sure I'll get more energy to do more of those. Actually, I put up one just before Christmas as well, which I'll link in the description box down below. Just online spaces in general, to be honest, last year the internet has always been a really important thing to me, even though I didn't have it when I was, was very young. Um, we got the internet, I think, in our house when I was maybe 14. Uh, and since then, and forums and, and finding people online, like-minded people, talking about things that I love has always been such such a big thing for me. But last year, more than any year, and I'm sure that I'm speaking for all of us, it was so wonderful and I was just so grateful to, to have this space and and other places like it online where I could um, where I could come to so thank you for being a part of that that sounds really cheesy but I 100% mean it thank you very much I have a, a few favorites that I can hold up here and honestly these are the things <laughs> brought me joy. We moved into this flat last January. Um, we haven't been able to do much to it. We haven't even bought a sofa. And just We haven't done anything apart from paint it and put, put our stuff in it really. But that has been nice to do. But one of the things that has been my absolute favourite, and I've included these in favourites videos before, but are these OXO Good Grip 
um, storage containers. I have lots for flour and sugar and rice and pasta, pasta that I've made myself and then have been drying. And um, they've got these airlock mechanisms, which are really easy to open and shut. They're great. They built them for people who have um, arthritis and I couldn't not mention these without mentioning my label maker, both of which I will link in the description box down below. These are the things that bring light to my life now. I spoke about our favourite board games in a video recently, which I'll link in the description box down below. It's right at the end of that video and that list hasn't changed. My favourite board game from last year though was definitely Battle Line, which is one of the smallest games that we have. It only takes five minutes to play, but we have played this at least once every day since we got it. It's that good and we haven't got bored of it yet. I talk about how you play it in the video over there. It's only a two player game. My favorite cookbook from last year was this one, which is Dumplings and Noodles by P Pippa Middlehurst. I've been making lots of Chinese and Japanese cuisine and this has been extremely helpful. And then let's talk about TV favourites. Okay, so my favourite film of last year was Parasite, which I saw in January last year, and I don't remember watching any other films that really came close to that. That was obviously the only film that I saw at the cinema. I don't even know how many I've watched at home. Um, TV has definitely been the thing that we have been going to, series that you can watch online. I loved Lock and Key, which is a, a fantastic, it was a graphic novel, has now been made into a TV show, um, drama, magical realism, fantasy about a family who go to this old house where you can open doors and they take you to different places but the doors aren't just in the house, they're also in the family's body so you can find a key that unlocks your head and then you can walk around your brain and it materialises in a metaphorical way to show what your brain is like so that might be a department store or it might be something else I absolutely loved it I loved RuPaul All Stars 5 I think that's one of my favourite seasons of Drag Race I'm so happy that we've got two series of Drag Race going on at the moment we've got the new US series and the new UK series we're being utterly spoilt here's Dark Materials season 2 Adored it, loved that there were more demons in season two than in the first one because that was really the one thing that was bugging me in the first series that they had cut back to save money, I assume, uh, on CGI. They rectified that. My absolute favourite thing, I think, that we watched last year, and I found it by accident, I'd signed up for a free week of Apple TV because there is a new film, is it called The Wolf Walkers, which is made by the people who make Song of the Sea. So I'd signed up so we could watch that, except I didn't end up watching that because I saw that there was a new series with Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman called Long Way Up. I vaguely remember that they had made a motorbike traveling show years and years ago. It was actually in 2004 when they made their first one, which was called Long Way Round, and they decided to bike from London to New York the long way round. So through Europe, through Russia, Mongolia, uh, and then across America. And I'd never watched that. And then they did Long Way Down, which was from Scotland to Cape Town. So Mr. M and I decided to watch this new one, which was called Long Way Up, where they were cycling from Argentina to LA and they were using electric motorbikes which they had never done before so the logistics of that where are they going to charge I loved it so much we've already started re-watching it so we watched that series and then we went back and we watched Long Way Round, Long Way Down and now we're watching Long Way Up again it's like a Top Gear special without all of the non-PC jokes it meets Michael Palin it's warm and lovely and I have got so much enjoyment from it, I can't even tell you. So if you did watch the old ones, they're definitely worth a rewatch. But this new one I think only came out at the end of last year. I think they filmed it in 2019. They're obviously a lot older than they were when they did the first one. Charlie has had a lot of motorbike accidents since doing the first two. So them navigating all of those things, plus the electric bikes. Oh, it was such a joy. Please watch it. Make, for some reason it makes me want to cry talking about it. I don't really know why. Um, Mr. M and I went through a phase of watching lots of obstacle course TV, um, maybe to make us feel like we were exercising more than we actually were. Um, so Floor is Lava was lots of fun. Ultimate Beastmaster was great. Strong and Broken Skull Ranch. If you're looking for obstacle course TV, 
quite a niche recommendation, but there you go. Um, also Below Deck, we watched all the seasons of that last year, which is a reality TV show about people who work on a super yacht. So it's not about the guests, it's about the people who work Below Deck. Loved it. And something that we watched over Christmas, which I adored, was Alice in Borderland. This is a Japanese TV show, so it is subtitled. I think, again, it is from a graphic novel series, but I haven't read that. And it is about a guy and his friends who are misbehaving in Tokyo, and they go to hide from the police in a public bathroom. And when they come out, their Tokyo has changed completely and they find themselves in a dystopian Tokyo where every evening a different building or series of buildings will light up and you go there and you play a game. And the game might be um, a card game, a diamond game, a spade game or a club game. I forgot the other suit there. And it's not just a fun game, it's a, a game to the death. It's like Battle Royale meets Black Mirror, but it is a play on Alice in Wonderland. But, a, a, well, I was going to say a subtle one. The references are definitely there, but it's not a play-by-play -play Alice retelling or anything like that. It has certain characters who mimic characters within Alice in Wonderland, but it's its whole own thing as well. I absolutely loved it. It's not for the faint-hearted at all, but if you enjoy Black Mirror and Battle Royale or The Hunger Games, which is based on Battle Royale and Shirley Jackson's The Lottery, then definitely check that out. It's on Netflix. There were so many great things about the internet last year, but my favourite person that I discovered is Luke Millington Drake, who does... <laughs> favourite thing? The favourite person that I discovered. He does sketches online. Um, he has a series of characters that he's created, but he also does Kiera Knightley impressions. And I cannot with his Kiera Knightley impressions. They are amazing. I'm sure that most of you have heard of him because he has gone viral many, many, many times, but I will link his, um, his profile in the description box down below. I love his tortellini, mozzarella and bruschetta sketches. They make me laugh a lot, so much so that I actually bought our friends an Emma, Emma Bridgewater cake plate that said yummy scrummy, dipped it on it, and if you know, then you know. I don't have any goals really for 2021. Um, I would like to continue doing the things that I am doing. <laughs> um, and that's it. I am not setting any other goals, maybe in the future, once vaccines and stuff, and it, it looks like more things could be potentially planned or mapped out, then I'll come back to that. But really, it's just about uh, keeping on. I think that is the plan. Um, I would love to know what your favourite things from last year were. Please share them in the comments section down below. And if you are setting any goals for this year, then then I would love to hear those as well. Um, and I think that that's kind of it. I will see you for another video very soon. Sending lots of love. Bye.